Over the last several years, Warren Buffett has spoken out quite a bit against unfair tax policies where people who make less money are on the hook for paying a higher percentage in their taxes than people at the extreme upper end of the spectrum. His famous example is that his secretary pays a higher percentage of her earnings per year in federal taxes than he does, even though he's a billionaire. So, um, while Warren Buffett certainly hasn't advocated for anything radical, he has tried to portray himself as someone who works in the public interest and who is an honest actor. And I think that for the most part, he deserves to be applauded to some extent for speaking out about these things when so many other billionaires don't. For instance, can you imagine Jeff Bezos saying or doing anything that is remotely not evil? I can't. Anyway. The problem with Buffett is that he has downplayed his own involvement in manipulating government rules to make money. Now, he has admitted that he, like other extremely rich people, has taken advantage of the rules. What he forgot or excluded from that account is that there are plenty of times where he had the rules rewritten to favor him rather than simply taking advantage of rules that favored him to begin with. And I think that that's a fundamentally different thing, and that changing the rules to favor yourself and then exploiting them is out-and-out -out corruption of the highest order. So today I'd like to look at one example where Warren Buffett padded his fortune at the expense of taxpayers like you and me by manipulating the rules and gouging people on energy prices. Buffett's personal persona his image that he's built over many years is the Oracle of Omaha, this larger-than-life figure, the modern Delphic Oracle, except that all of his prophecies are on the future of finance and investment. And now he's trying to expand his reach as an oracle, as a wise man, into the sphere of public policy. And if you look at just what he's proposed in front of cameras, You'd think, well, he's not wrong. The things he, he's proposing are fairly common sense things, like having rich people pay a higher percentage of their earnings than poor people. However, I think that his image is a bit dishonest, just like any public image that someone cultivates over a long period of time. It disguises some of the reality. He is someone who has manipulated the rules of the game, as we'll discuss in detail. And while it is important to give him some credit for his charitable donations and the times when he does say sensible things, I think that we need to be honest about what Warren Buffett is. At heart, he's not a champion of the working class. He was not some sort of hero for equality just because he was allies with Barack Obama. After all, Barack Obama was a neoliberal and a through-and-through -through corporatist. And I think Warren Buffett really is that, and the only reason why he's come out now is not because he's had some sort of change of heart or because he genuinely cares about working Americans. It's more that the country has shifted so far to the right on economics that it has struck him as insane and potentially unprofitable. So he has decided to speak out in order to protect the future of investments and in order to make sure that the country remains stable enough to be a viable investment arena. At any rate, Let's move into how Warren Buffett and his cronies really fucked over some people in Iowa. Up until 1999 or so, Iowa enjoyed relatively low energy prices, and that's partly because they had a marketplace with a reasonable amount of competition. Iowa had nine corporate energy companies and then several public utilities sprinkled around the state, and that variety and competition kept prices down. However, in 1999, Warren Buffett's Mid-American Energy and the Alliant Energy Company decided to consolidate all of these various companies into a duopoly. So from 1999 to the present, there are really only two options in Iowa, and some of the public utilities have also survived. And whenever you have a market get cornered by someone who now has no competition, they can raise the price and they don't have to worry about there being any repercussions for doing so. For Iowa, this was a problem though, because not only did this send energy costs up for residents, which is always a bad thing, especially if you are not wealthy or you lived on a fixed income, 
but also if you are a manufacturer. The energy costs are key. If energy costs go up, then your ability to make a profit on the things that you produce goes down pretty dramatically. So, naturally, Iowans were not happy with this development and they tried to fight back. For Iowans, the solution was for the cities with manufacturing interest to try to move to municipal power. So, Johnson City and five other towns with manufacturing interests decided to try to buy out some assets from MidAmerican in order to set up their own municipal systems. And in order to do that, to have the expertise to go through the legal process of buying these out and then setting up a functioning utility, they were receiving advice from the Iowa Association of Municipal Utilities, which was a support group for the nine cities in Iowa which had their own municipal systems. So this is all above board and these cities were willing to pay fair market value for the assets that MidAmerican had and if anything might have even been willing to pay a little bit more than they were worth because of the long term benefits of having their own municipal power systems. However, MidAmerican did not respond in kind or simply decline the offer, but rather they went on the offensive and tried to crush this movement in its footsteps. So, how did MidAmerican fight back? Warren Buffett's MidAmerican Energy decided on a twofold strategy. First, in case they ended up losing these local assets to the six cities that were trying to break away from them, lobbyists went to Iowa's capital and they tried to ensure that price caps would not be imposed, so that way they could engage in a little bit of gouging and run up some profit while they still had these assets in hand. And to make sure that they kept these assets permanently beyond just being able to price gouge for a little while, Buffett's other lobbyist in Iowa proposed legislation which would bury the nine cities with municipal power. They were drafting a bill which would make city-owned tax systems pay taxes, which is something that they weren't doing at this point. This would take away their lower energy cost uh, from them. And it would also make them outdated over time by preventing them from making changes or upgrades to their systems, which is an absurd requirement. Makes no sense at all. But of course, that would eventually make their energy inefficient and expensive by doing something like that. Um, so they also tried to block them from expanding their services to offer something like um, cable TV or internet service. So basically what Buffett's lobbyists were trying to do is cripple the advisory organization which was simply giving advice to the cities that were trying to break away. So they were going after the group that could potentially provide the expertise and advice, not a group that was actively at war with mid-American energy. And keep in mind these public utilities aren't for profit so the nine cities who were already using municipal power didn't really stand to gain all that much by having six other cities join them. This completely unreasonable bill to cripple the public utilities was actually something of a feint. Buffett's agents and lobbyists secretly offered to let this bill die if the association agreed to refuse any further advice to the six towns that were trying to switch to municipal power. So, the association, which saw its very existence and livelihood being threatened, backed down. What else could they have done? They would have literally lost everything had they persisted, because if that bill had passed, then ultimately over the course of a couple of decades, their business model would have become completely obsolete and they would have been purchased for pennies on the dollar by some corporate cocksuckers like MidAmerican. So they were forced into a corner and extorted out of this arena. And without the help and advice of the association, Johnson City and the five other towns were unable to break away from the grip of MidAmerican. And if we're being completely realistic, even with the help of the association, given exactly how bought and sold Iowa's state government was by the energy industry, and especially by MidAmerican, I really don't think that all of the association's resources would have made a difference. But the point is that when we hear business leaders like Warren Buffett talk about 
being tough and being aggressive, sometimes they mean being corrupt and being underhanded. So really read between the lines when business leaders praise themselves for their toughness and their resourcefulness because a lot of times what they're saying is that they're pulling strings and getting politicians to intervene on their behalf. Aside from using the government as a tool to manipulate the market and crush potential competitors, including public sector competitors, Warren Buffett also has taken advantage of the tax laws. So he is actually a good authority when he says that there are a lot of loopholes that rich people can take advantage of that potentially need to be closed or addressed in some way. In fact, another thing that MidAmerican did for the public is that they managed to get their taxes deferred pretty heavily. So Warren Buffett and his companies actually do pay taxes. They're not GE, but they do so on their own terms. And what do I mean by that? Well, in 2007, there was an agreement that MidAmerican reached with the federal government where they agreed to pay the $666 million in taxes that they owe, but they will pay those taxes over a 28-year period with no interest. And due to inflation and not having to pay all at once, this means that MidAmerican will save a ton of money on their taxes. And it also means that the public will be denied quite a bit of revenue. Once everything is said and done, the government will only end up collecting about 40 cents on the dollar in terms of actual value for what MidAmerican owes in tax revenue. So while Warren Buffett may not be a tax evader, his companies certainly still manipulate the rules and do not operate by the same standards that you or I operate off of. Despite the fact that MidAmerican is still on the hook for a tax settlement in 2007, Trump's tax cuts still positively benefited MidAmerican. They saved $42 million, which will be passed on to consumers in the form of $20 for electric and $10 for gas, which is totally meaningless because Iowa gets hot in the summer and cold as hell in the winter. So this sum is measly. And this is spread over the course of an entire year, so consumers most likely will not notice. Even when MidAmerican puts this in the bill and brags about it, no one will be the wiser that is actually taking place. My point is, Warren Buffett is not the worst abuser of our political system in America. However, he is one of the abusers of that system, and he abuses the system to enrich himself and his family. In that regard, he's equivalent in many ways to Jeff Bezos, the Walton family, the Koch brothers. He might not be as bad as them, he might be more self-aware, and he might even be willing to admit to some of his own failings and crimes. However, he is still someone who has taken advantage of the system. And the problem is not so much Warren Buffett himself as that we have a system which admits of being manipulated by wealthy individuals in a way which is decidedly undemocratic and unfair. What we need to do is get money out of politics. We can't continue to allow the wealthy to manipulate the mechanisms of power through their monetary might. When they do so, all they do is deter competition, drive up prices, and undermine the sovereignty of the people. The people of Iowa and the six cities that I mentioned clearly wanted to have municipal power. However, they were not allowed to because their state government was corrupt and they were being paid off by mid-American energy. So, that is a clear example of the sovereignty of the people being undermined by rich people engaging in corruption. And if that is not enough reason to get money out of politics, I really don't know what is. Until next time, I'm Thersites the Historian.